very good afternoon uh, dear colleagues welcome to the professional development program on the national education policy aap sabhi ko pata hai ki ye hamara 10th batch hai jisme hum vibhinn muddon pe rashtriya shiksha niti ke vibhinn muddon pe hum aap se baat chit karte aaye hain aap sath rubaru hote hue aaye hain aur usi kare ki aaj ye chautha interactive session aapke sath hai जिसमें हम बातचीत करेंगे एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दे पे आ, मैं डॉक्टर अली असगर स्टाफ ट्रेनिंग एंड रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट में डिसेंस इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिसेंस एजुकेशन में सहायक प्रोफेसर के पद पर कार्यरत हूँ और आज हमारे साथ महत्वपूर्ण बिंदु जो है राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति की वो है फोर ईयर अंडर ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम और आप सभी को पता है कि मल्टीपल एंट्री एंड एग्जिट का जो प्रावधान है नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी में उस पर खास तौर से बात की गई है और उसी सिलसिले में फोर ईयर अंडर ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम पे भी एकेडमिक हल्के में काफ़ी चर्चा है और उस बातचीत हो रही है और यूजीसी गाइडलाइंस जो है यूनिवर्सिटी ग्रांड कमीशन गाइडलाइंस वो आ चुकी है आ, और आज इस मुद्दे पर बात करने के लिए हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं रिनाउंड प्रोफेसर जो आपके साथ पहले भी विभिन्न प्लेटफॉर्म से विभिन्न माध्यम से आप उसके साथ इंटरेक्ट किए होंगे प्रोफेसर सुदीप रंजन झा जो प्रोफेसर हैं फिजिक्स के इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय में स्कूल ऑफ साइंसेज में तीस साल का तजर्बा है इनके पास पढ़ने और पढ़ाने का साइंस सब्जेक्ट का और इस्पेशली ओडियल सिस्टम के साथ इनका काफ़ी गहरा संबंध है और Uh, सर ने इग्नू में विभिन्न uh, पदों पे स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द लेक्चर नाउ ही हैज रीच डब्ल्यू द लेवल ऑफ प्रोफेसर एंड हिज एरिया और एक्सपर्टाइज इज ऑन डिजाइनिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एंड डिलीवरी ऑफ डिफरेंट एकेडमिक प्रोग्राम्स यूज ऑफ आई सी टी इन टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम हिज डोमेन एरिया दैट इज फिजिक्स Sir has a publication, a various publications to his credit. He has about ten research papers, and uh, various uh, research papers he has presented in various national and international conferences. Moreover, sir has been a member of board of management at IGNU, and. member of various board of school uh, school boards at indira gandhi state university like school of sciences school of humanities school of engineering and technology school of law and school of agriculture and so on and so forth so with these words i welcome professor jha uh, to this session uh, and he will be before you within a few seconds please wait hello and uh, good afternoon to all of you and uh, let me begin with uh, thanking and dr asgar for his uh, kind words and i understand that uh, this pdp on nep 2020 is uh, essentially meant for college and university teachers so i will be talking ultimately to a larger uh, group of colleagues as uh, dr asgar told you i am a teacher here in school of sciences my discipline is physics and uh, as you all know since last 2 years uh, after the announcement of national education policy 2020 this document is a topic of very vigorous discussion across all HEIs be it university departments or colleges and uh, UGC has been at the forefront of uh, bringing out uh, further documents uh, with a view to implement uh, the policy which has been Uh, articulated very nicely in this brief document that is NEP 2020 i hope that as part of this pdp program you had had enough time to go through this, through this document <clears throat> it's a brief document of around 60 to 63 pages and if you confine your interest to higher education then it's ultimately reduces to 20 23 pages but it's a very potent document because uh, it 
it has completely reimagined uh, the higher education uh, landscape in our country and uh, i'll briefly uh, come to those uh, you know you can say that ground breaking uh, ideas which has been propagated through this brief document and in the series of different documents which ugc has come out uh, to facilitate hei's to for effective implementation of policy guidelines uh, incorporated in nep 22 2020 uh, that the latest one is the uh, guiding guidelines in the form of curriculum and credit framework for undergraduate programs now just to give you a background that uh, this document essentially uh, is an elaboration on how to implement the idea of four year undergraduate program how to integrate it to the ultimately masters program of the country and it's a general framework and institutions have been given enough liberty to adapt this framework without compromising the overall intent what it uh, tries to address and achieve through this framework so today i will uh, focus on some of the salient features in a in the limited context of uh, uh, undergraduate programs which is presently being offered across the country and what kind of uh, modifications is expected in the light of this guideline which has come as a document which is there on the screen of yours it is available on ugc website and i will suggest that you should find time to go through it it is again a very brief document it is only 32 pages and uh, it will be a good reading for you to further effectively participate in the discussion and debate which is going to happen in your institution be it a college or a university department now uh, just to give you a background that nep 2020 document essentially focuses and it says that there are certain limitations in our higher education and the focus is to reimagine our undergraduate programs and they have listed certain limitations and these are the measures they say that if we Uh, think of higher education institution restructure them restructure the institutional structures restructure the curriculum then what ultimately it will lead to is a good undergraduate program which will be helpful for people who are pursuing those undergraduate programs and the, our graduates who comes out uh, from this new uh, undergraduate program structure will be a more effective citizen who will be an asset for national development as well as his or her personal growth and well being so that is the whole idea uh, and in that uh, to, to that to achieve that thing they have listed certain uh, uh, action points so to say first is that uh, multidisciplinary higher education is the utmost priority as of now uh, if you reflect on your undergraduate curriculum which is uh, in place whether it is in the form of new cbcs based undergraduate programs which certain universities have have adopted and running since last 5 6 years including my own institution ignu we are also offering cbcs based undergraduate programs there are certain uh, other institutions also but a large number of uh, universities in the our country have yet not adopted cbcs and they are following their uh, earlier pattern of undergraduate program so what one thing which comes out very uh, very clearly from the earlier undergraduate program structure is that the focus on discipline or subject based knowledge was the paramount the entire undergraduate program who consisted of mostly subject based knowledge one subject two subject in case of honors more of a subject than other subject which is we used to know as uh, subsidiary or minors and all that so that uh, structure is thought to be revisited and the idea is to 
offload some of the subject based deep knowledge content at the undergraduate level and create a space for other learning experiences from other disciplines from the areas of vocational studies from the area of skill enhancement from the area of languages and uh, last but not the least some value added courses should also be taught at uh, to all our undergraduates whether they are pursuing ba bcom or bsc so that is um, one of the important shift you create a space by cutting down on the subject based knowledge so that you, you can give them exposure to other areas of studies which is perceived as an important requirement for the national development as well as for the well being of the graduates who are going to come out of the system therefore what they say that institutional restructuring will be the precondition because as on date we are working in silos in the sense there are science colleges there are commerce colleges there are arts colleges the moment you intend to go for multidisciplinary higher education which entails that a science graduate should have opportunities to study certain courses in commerce and certain courses in humanities and social sciences and vice versa so how these uh, uh, unitary kind of a university and system uh, mostly colleges will address and make their undergraduate program multidisciplinary that is one challenge that has to be attained by going some kind of an institutional restructuring next is that uh, nep as well as the new document i am going to de uh, discuss in detail uh, the intent of the document that it is not necessary that everybody who has entered undergraduate program need to go for uh, higher studies be it be it uh, sorry be it masters program or uh, uh, be it research program there are many uh, Uh, exit points given and you can uh, study uh, till you find it interesting and while you uh, study you can make up your mind whether you want to go further or you want to terminate your studies and go to the work of world of work so that is uh, uh, secondly it also says that it is not necessary that all institutions necessarily be a research university or uh, universities can decide that what is going to be their priority whether teaching is their priority or research is going to be their priority accordingly the intake and the kind of undergraduate and postgraduate program they offer that will be decided depending upon the prioritization it does not mean that universities and colleges will be exclusively either research university college or teaching what is uh, what is being meant here is that what is the priority of the institution that is another aspect institution should uh, uh, decide for themselves and develop in terms of a institutional development program next is the curriculum restructuring that is what has been suggested in in this document and the intent of that restructuring is to integrate science social sciences and humanities and it will everybody gets into undergraduate program and depending upon what are his a choice of subjects and discipline specific courses that will ultimately decide what kind of a degree he or she gets also it requires that every commerce graduate need to study some of the science courses some of the humanities and social sciences courses and vice versa so there is nothing like if you have decided to go for bsc you have no exposure to any course at undergraduate level which comes from social sciences humanities and commerce it has been made a mandatory part that again i will come when i go to the structure they have proposed in this document and then uh, there is a strong focus that somehow while people are doing undergraduate program they must have some exposure in the form of internship to the world of work they must do some spend some time with the society or with the industry as part of their undergraduate curriculum that has also been made mandatory and last but not the least as i told you that it is not necessary that anybody who is admitting himself or herself to undergraduate program need to complete the entire program and go for the higher studies there are very meaningful and useful exit points starting from first year 
after two years, after three years and after four years. That is another important point uh, which has been suggested in, in this document. So this uh, curriculum and credit framework undergraduate program whose document I am going to discuss, it says that now there will be three kinds of undergraduate degrees. One will be at the end of three years and the degree will be awarded as UG with major in one of the subject. The subject can be of your choice, it can be history, it can be physics, it can be commerce. And then there are detailing that what kind of minor and other things will be there, but you will be awarded a degree after the end of three years with UG undergraduate with major in one of the subject you decide to study all through six semesters of three years. Second kind of uh, undergraduate degree they foresee is it will be called four years undergraduate degree with honors. Naturally, the, the subject in which you want to be called uh, honors holder, you have to study more of the courses of that subject. And third category is again the time frame is same, four years, but you have an option, the students will be having an option at the, at the last semester, that is the eighth semester in fourth year that they can pursue uh, 12 credits worth of research in uh, a project while they are doing undergraduate program in lieu of the three courses which is mandatory for people who are not going for research and doing coursework based honors program. So that research will uh, prepare them to go for higher studies. So from the very structure you can see that even within undergraduate nomenclature they are saying that only those who are keenly interested in research and higher studies, only they should go for that. And for them, there should be some preparation at the undergraduate level itself so that they save time and do some more meaningful courses when they go for postgraduate program. So these are the three types of undergraduate degrees which have been envisaged in this curriculum uh, framework. Uh, which has come out from UGC as guidelines for restructuring undergraduate programs. Now, uh, if you read this document, uh, then uh, there is something called uh, creditization. I think those of you uh, being in IGNU, I am familiar with credit system because uh, it was uh, with us from the day one when the university started. All our courses and programs are credit based. but. For those university systems who were not familiar with what this credit is all about, CBCS gave them an opportunity to know what uh, accreditizing the courses means. And it is an effort to uh, induce some kind of standardization across the country over, uh, in terms of learning outcomes and standardization of undergraduate programs. So with that thing in view, what this document suggests that these are the, on, on the left hand side you will say that broad category of courses and then minimum credit requirement which is required from each category to ultimately get a three years degree. So there are now eight type of broad category of courses. This is a major shift. If you look at your undergraduate programs right now in which you are teaching, uh, you will find that at best only two category or three category of courses are there. You can say major, you can say that it is something similar to discipline specific honors and minor you can always say that all honors students have to go do some subsidiary subjects which again come from a discipline. For example, physics honors people have to study certain courses in mathematics or chemistry or statistics, whatever is available in that institution. But now it is necessary for every graduate to have courses from these at least seven types of courses. So this is a major shift and you should, uh, let me devote some time on this. Now, in the third, three years undergraduate program, you will say that minimum credit requirement is total 120 credits. Now, out of 120 credits, they have given 
50 percent that is 60 credits has to be earned from discipline specific course just to uh, give you an example side by side someone is going to have let's say history major then out of 120 credits he or she has to study 60 credits worth of courses in history then another 24 24 is further bifurcated into 12 plus 12 so another 24 from minor stream so the history major student can decide that he or she will go for minor in let's say sociology so out of 24 12 credit he or she has to study from sociology courses and remaining 12 is necessarily to come from vocational courses this is another challenge for institutions which are unitary institutions. They have no clue what vocational education is all about. And in a sense, it is an effort. This, this document as well as NEP also, if you read it carefully, there is a strong emphasis to mainstream vocational education that has been incorporated in this structure by making it mandatory for every graduate to do at least 12 credits worth of vocational courses under the minor stream. Then third category is multidisciplinary. I will come to that again. Here the intent is that someone is doing history major and sociology major. They are debarred from taking multidisciplinary courses from social sciences. They are now required to take multidisciplinary courses worth nine credit from beyond that broad category of disciplines. So they have to go beyond humanities and social sciences and they have to pick up courses from science, commerce, mathematics, computer science, etc. So by that requirement, it is, it is now made mandatory for every graduate to not only learn one subject in detail, that is in this case, the example I was citing history, but also to study some of physics and some of commerce and some of mathematics under this multidisciplinary category of courses. Fourth is ability enhancement. Ability enhancement courses essentially mean for languages. The focus of this document is that students should have opportunity to learn at least two languages and the focus of language teaching should be more on communication skill than from the literature in that language. So that focus has shifted slightly but it essentially contains two or two courses or four courses of languages and communication skill in that language. Any two, those two, two languages can be any two language of your choice and whatever is available in the institution you are studying. Fifth category is skill enhancement. Skill enhancement courses was also a part of CBCS scheme, which large number of universities are following. That has been retained here. Idea here is that the graduates should be ready for the world of work, their employability, uh, should go up as they pass out with a graduation certificate. Instead of subject-based knowledge, they should have some skills which is useful and needed in the market and the economy so that they, uh, they, their employability goes up. Sixth category of course is value-added courses. It is again common and they have listed that from which area these value-added courses will come. Some of the areas are that uh, environment is one uh, such area, climate change is another area, then uh, ICT is another area, then knowing your country uh, uh, in a different perspective is another area, knowing your uh, heritage, knowing your culture, knowing your tourism, everything related. So those, those value added courses again are compulsory and it has to be taken by everybody. It is not a, you know, earlier it used to be a domain of social sciences to know all these values, but that is not the case. Those value added courses has to be taken by everybody, whether he or she is doing BA, BCom or BSc. And last but not the least, I told you that uh, this undergraduate program requires that all graduates must have some experience of actual place of work, be it industry, be it society, be it any vocation, be it uh, NGO. There are n number of activities going on in the society. So they have to move from out of their college and university campuses and go to the society and the field of work to know and get a first-hand feeling what the world will be once they graduate and come out of the college and university system. So that exposure again is compulsory and all these components are compulsory. It is uh, compulsory for 
all the stream arts, science, humanities and commerce. So this is how this has been structured. So you can see that there is a complete shift and uh, how this will be implemented by someone sitting in a college whose college is a arts college and who is offering programs at best up to honors level in art subjects right so they must be wondering that where from all these courses and where from all these teachers will come so i will come to that uh, issues and challenges later on now slightly different from this is four years undergraduate program here again you will see that load of discipline has gone to 50 percent out of 160 80 credit courses has to come from that uh, discipline area be it uh, history or physics and similarly, all other things remains constant except for the minor. Again, the load has gone up by uh, eight credits. So discipline load has gone up by four credit. Four goes into the baskets of vocational education. Even four years honors, mind you, this is important. Even four years honors, which uh, we will think that honors is a very subject intensive uh, uh, course. Even they have to do 16 credits worth of vocational courses, which is reflected in the second minor stream. Apart from doing 16 credits in any other minor discipline he or she chooses. And rest all components are even compulsory for those who are aspiring to become four year undergraduate with honors. Not only that, even those who want to become a four year undergraduate honors with research for them also all these vocational multidisciplinary ability enhancement skill enhancement and value added courses and internship these are the constant fixture of all graduates whether they by deciding to go for research in the fourth year they have made up their mind that they may pursue higher studies and go for the research career or teaching career whatever but even they have not been spared and they also are expected to know all these subjects and study courses from all these broad category of courses before they become graduate after four years. So the total credit requirement for getting four year undergraduate degree is 160 credit and this is the, the breakup. So this is an important document which you should uh, reflect on and see that how your institution is going to revisit your undergraduate structure and incorporate these uh, types of courses in your undergraduate program. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this idea of credit and uh, those of you who are not uh, familiar with CBCS, the university system was first time exposed with this credit idea by CBCS structure. So those universities and colleges who have followed CBCS, they may be familiar. But those of you who are not familiar with CBCS, for them it is a new idea. Just to give you a simple thumb of rule that what credit means. One credit means that as a teacher you take a one hour class, right? So in a uh, semester is typically of 15 weeks. Now things are being talked in terms of semester rather than annual system. So in a 15 week semester, if you cover a content, cover a course by taking one class per week of one hour, then the content you have covered over the period of semester, that is 15 hours, that will be given one credit. That is the definition of one credit and it is directly related to the content a teacher teaches in 15 hours classroom lecture. And in terms of a student time also, this document defines that 30 hours of a student time, which includes 15 hours of attending the class and 15 hours self-study, the content a student can assimilate and understand and comprehend in, by devoting 30 hours, that content should be given one credit. So now you go to the uh, syllabi of your course. So if you look at the syllabi of your course and you find that this syllabi you can cover in let's say 30 uh, hours of classroom teaching or 45 hours of classroom teaching. Accordingly, that syllabus will be of a course which will be worth two credits or three credits. If you think that this content will require 
60 hours of classroom teaching, then that syllabus and that course will be assigned four credit course. So that is how credit system works. And by doing that, you have to see that if at the undergraduate level, whatever subject you are teaching at your college or the university, uh, your entire undergraduate curriculum for three years must have courses worth 60 credits, right? So I told you in the uh, previous, uh, this one, uh, if you can see the column three, the major uh, core courses has to be uh, 60 credits. So undergraduate curriculum for let's say history for three years undergraduate has to be 60 credit course. Accordingly, you will devise your curriculum as well as give different credits or to your courses. Same holds true for honors. It has to be go up to 80 credits. And in case your institution is not in a position to offer research worth 12 credit, then there is an option of offering three courses instead of research project, three courses of four credits each. So in that case, for undergraduate uh, or four year honors degree, uh, a discipline must have courses worth 92 credits, 80 plus 12 credits of research project, that is 92 credits. That is the entire thing. So whatever you are teaching at under honors level right now, you have to see that it is worth 92 credits. And some of the things in the fourth year, I will come to, I will touch upon that also. They have said in this document that some of them can come from the first year of postgraduate programs also to make up for this 92 credits. And typically in this document and now this uh, issue is almost settled that a student's credit load per semester should be 20 credits for undergraduate and postgraduate program. So arithmetic now works out very nicely. You can see uh, 20 credits per semester. So for three years undergraduate program, you have six semester, three years, and that is six semesters and 20 credit per semester works out to 120 credits. So this is how undergraduate programs have been structured in terms of credit load per semester. And accordingly, in some of the document are saying that this will stay 20 credit per semester will stay at the postgraduate level also. So the postgraduate degree of two years will be of 80 credits uh, in total. Now, let me devote some time here, and this is the meat of the entire document, that this gives you a detailed semester-wise and broad course category-wise distribution of credits. Now, this is table three of the document I am discussing right now. I am discussing curriculum and credit framework for undergraduate program, which UGC has come out recently as a guidelines for university and college systems to revisit their undergraduate programs. Now here, uh, this table will give you an idea that what is expected from us, that is, we teachers are supposed to reflect on this table, go back to the drawing board, sit with, with our courses, their syllabi, and see how everything fits in nicely what additional things are to be added, what is to be, du uh, what is duplicated, therefore to be dropped and things like that. First, uh, on the first column, this is semester wise breakup. Then you see that discipline specific courses, 100 level. Now something about leveling of the courses. Uh, in, in some of the institutions, uh, including IITs, by uh, suppose a course in physics is labeled PH, 105, right? So the intent of leveling is that by looking at the course code, I can make certain uh, inferences. First inference is that it is 100, the level of the code, pH is let's say subject code, pH stands for physics and 102 is between 100 and 199. So it is a 100 level course. Similarly, there are courses up to 400 levels in this table. You can see when you go to the 7th and 8th semester, it is written that 400 level courses. In this document, they have defined broadly four levels. First is a level of courses which can be assigned numbers from 100 to 199. Those are the courses which are 
introductory courses in that discipline, be it history or mathematics or biology or geology. Next level is uh, intermediate level and they have said that intermediate level courses should be given level between 200 and 299. So those courses will find place in third and fourth semester. If you go by uh, the discipline specific core courses I am now focusing. 300 level courses they have said that those are higher level courses in that discipline. Any discipline, uh, the course you think that it is higher level course, then you give its level between 300 to 399. And if you think that this course is advanced level course of your discipline, then the level should be given between 400 to 499. This is how things are structured. So as a graduate progresses from first semester to eighth semester, the course level and in terms of difficulty, inter introductory course is easier than intermediate, intermediate is easier than higher, higher is easier than advanced. So as you progress along the semester, you come across rather relatively difficult and involved courses in from that discipline and this is how these courses are to be leveled. So this is one thing. Second is minor course. It has also to come from different discipline. You have to offer 100 level course as a minor course also and as it should be available as a major course. Then if I focus now on the discipline aspect, then these two columns are complete and your job as a teacher of a discipline ends here. You have to have these many courses. Of course, you have to see that how many, let's say, in semester four, you have to have 200 level courses, not only one. 200 courses has to be so many so that the credit requirement of 20 credits, total 20 credits for that semester is met. So if you focus on the fourth semester, uh, then you see that there is a one course here, ability enhancement course of two credits. Then 200 and above level course that is minor is a four credit course. So out of 24 plus two, six credit courses goes towards minor and ability enhancement in the fourth semester. So in the fourth semester, you are left with 14 credits. So you must have 200 level courses as many so that it makes at least 14 credits available to the students. So the students in fourth semester from let's say history will have to take at least uh, two four credit courses, rather three four credit courses and one two credit course. Then only his or her requirement to have 20 credits in that semester will be met. So it is like that. Uh, it is let, uh, only the level is written. It does not mean that you have to have only one course there. The number of courses will be decided that by how many credits are left in the quota of major. So that is how it is structured. And rest is a matter of details. You can see I have listed earlier that there are seven categories. Here also you will see that in this table the column numbers are seven. So all those courses which list were listed here, they are placed here differently. And why they are placed here differently, that is also interesting. Let me explain. Now, this document also says that after one year, the student can exit. Uh, it's written there. Exit one is UG certificate provided they secure four credits in work-based vocational courses. Now, Suppose I have entered undergraduate program and after one year for any reason, I want to exit. So this document and NAP both says that let the student's effort, which he or she has put in one year in the institution, it should be certified and rewarded. So you give, if, you, if they want to exit, give them a UG certificate. And once you uh, give them an UG certificate, they can go to the world of work. Therefore, the courses in first two semesters, you will see that the student will have exposure to all kinds of courses. In first two semesters, you will see that no column is left blank. 
they have to study therefore the idea is that even after one year if one is exiting the system he is having exposure to a wide variety of you know knowledge areas subject areas work experience skill enhancement language value added courses apart from the subject he or she is studying under first and second column of this table so that's a beautiful idea so to say because the person is going out in the world of work with a good uh, preparation so to say although the exposure to whether it is vocational or all skill is not that much but he or she is sensitized to all areas of uh, studies which undergraduate is expected to learn as he comes out of the system as a graduate similarly as you go up you will see that the all those uh, other columns other than discipline columns starts uh, becoming blank so the idea is that all these compulsory components similarly there is an exit after 2 years that is after fourth semester and this exit uh, at this time the student will be awarded ug diploma there are two provideds you mind you again that is intended to make them more employable in the sense that doing 40 credits is not sufficient to get a ug certificate over and above these 40 credits the students are supposed to also do four credits of vocational course then only they will qualify to get ug certificate that requirement remains even if they want to exit with ug diploma over and above 80 credits they have to do four more credits of vocational courses to qualify to get the ug diploma after two years so uh, in the nutshell all uh, exit is not only with a piece of pp so paper exit is with the sufficient uh, preparation to enter the workforce of the country at whatever level you are exiting of course if you are exiting with certificate level of course you can't aspire to get a you know kind of a job which a person with a ug degree of 3 years or some someone ug degree with 4 years and research will get but you are also qualified to fit in in the ladder of employment opportunities which the industry and the society uh, is of uh, offering you so you are uh, sufficiently trained in a way so this structure is very very nice in in my personal opinion i am so happy that so much of thinking has gone that uh, no effort of the student whether he or she has spent one year or two year or three years at every stage his achievement should be rewarded and he should be prepared for a better uh, with uh, with a much much better employability uh, possibilities uh, for him in the society and in the industry of the country and they become you know very productive and uh, Uh, useful uh, citizens of the country in so far as country's development is concerned so that focus uh, remains intact in this kind of a structure and this structure is nicely done how it will be implemented that remains a challenge i will come to that later on so in the nutshell what is the salient features of his four year undergraduate program the first is that there is an extensive spread in the learning experience by making everybody learn at least courses from seven to eight diverse areas which earlier used to be at best two to three areas so that is a wide horizontal spread in the learning experiences of students that is the most uh, significant contribution of this uh, new structure and that was there in in a germane form in nep 2020 also so they have translated that idea very nicely in this format and in this document implementation of course that's another challenge we'll talk about it later on second distinguishing feature of this uh, document is that they have made a very clear cut distinction that what a degree if a degree contains minor what does it mean if 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 a minor in a subject what does it indicate to the employer or to the society at large if he is a person is having a degree with major in a subject what does it indicate 
what does it reflect what kind of achievement in the knowledge of that subject he or she is expected to have and if someone is saying that i am honors in let's say sociology then what kind of uh, knowledge and ex- uh, a, a learning uh, experiences is expected from those students who call themselves honors so those uh, things have been very clear cut uh, defined in a very clear cut manner in this document third as i said earlier also now vocational education is not something out of your campus now it's part of your higher education system and it's a strong uh, document in the sense that they want to mainstream vocational education in the overall higher education system of the country which was not the case even now vocational education is not given that much importance and value in the society as it deserves as per nep document as well as this document has reiterated that importance of vocational education and therefore its mainstreaming is one of the major focus fourth is there are very meaningful exit options i i just discussed that how even after exiting after one year two semesters or four semesters a person is well equipped to go to the world of work as a competent employable person and fifth is that linking of higher education with society and place of work that has been uh, incorporated by making summer internship and vocational education and value addition value added courses compulsory for all graduates so that the students are made to go beyond the boundaries of their educational institutions and interact with the society while they are studying and graduating in whatever discipline of their choice now uh, again you see the salient features of the structure first three semesters you have exposure to large number of disciplines Yeah, if you recall this table, you can see that up to three semesters, all column courses are having some course, some credit course you have to do. But by the time you are done with third semester, your focus on any subject area becomes more and more focused. So up to third semester, it's kind of a wide uh, horizon of subject and uh, uh, learning experiences, and subsequently in the fourth fifth and sixth semester you go on more and more credits in major and minor discipline and of course seventh and eighth is a very advanced level course and it is expected that only those of the students who are keen and who are academic achievements are very good up to the mark up to sixth semester only they should pursue or in some way or the other institutions can also put certain benchmark that if your academic achievements are not up to this benchmark then there is no point you pursue uh, the fourth year which is going to be a very advanced level disciplinary and interdisciplinary courses and even research project also so the intent is that a uh, three year undergraduate uh, uh, should be a good uh, exit point for majority of students and only Uh, some of them who are very good at academics which is reflected by their results they should only uh, be persuaded to go for higher studies uh, by doing fourth year uh, here as a honors course and then pursue masters course of either one year or two year that is still a matter of debate and some document is expected soon on that so what is the implementation challenges now for teachers let me start being a teacher let me say that what is the take away if this uh, uh, curriculum framework is to be implemented what is the job i have to do as i told you that we have to sit with our syllabi of undergraduate honors and at, after some time very soon likely with the pg courses also and you give label to your courses whether they are intermediate uh, introductory courses give level 100 to 199 if they are intermediate give 200 levels if they are higher give 300 levels if they are advanced level give 400 levels and see to it that your discipline meets the requirement of offering 92 credit worth of different category courses you have to back calculate that at what level how many courses worth how many credits you need to have so 
it's a kind of a back calculation one had to do and I personally expect that UGC had come out with a model curriculum in case of CBCS, something similar may come here which will make our life easier to find that what courses and what syllabi, what I am teaching fits in where. Another is creatization of the courses, those of, the, those of you who come from such institution, I have given you some idea what uh, essentially credit means and you, uh, there is a reference point, uh, you can always go back to UGC website, they have a complete structure for CBCS based courses and the content at undergraduate level is not going to change uh, um, drastically over the period of 5-6 years. Uh, there may be certain additions here, certain deletions there, but broadly the content area remains the same at undergraduate level. So that will give you some idea that what kind of syllabi is worth how many credits for to that course. Third takeaway and uh, work for the uh, teachers uh, as per this document is, this is most important, explore possibilities of offering skill enhancement, vocational and value added courses from the discipline or in which you are a teacher or in the department where there are multidisciplinary departments and schools that you can think of collaborating with other discipline and offer courses in any of these new areas. So that is going to be the most challenging work looking at the land, looking at the landscape of higher education which is essentially given undergraduate level education is given by colleges and most of our country's colleges are unitary colleges um, by the name of uh, arts college, science college and commerce college. For such colleges it's going to be a challenge and UGC as well as government of India has come out uh, options how these things can be done but that's a different debate we can talk it out sometime else where uh, online and SWAM courses uh, have has been suggested that these can be taken by students in unitary colleges to meet the credit requirement for undergraduate programs. What is the implementation uh, expectations of this document from the institutions? Institutions like unitary institutions, they will have to identify departments, schools and centers within the institution for developing skill, vocational and value added courses if that is possible in that institution. Another expectation from the institutions is that create a nodal point for providing internship opportunities to UGS students. See, uh, ultimately it's going to be the responsibility of the institution to facilitate their undergraduate students to get an exposure of internship in whatever locality the institution is located. That uh, institution should not sigh away and tell their students that go and find for your internship opportunities whatever wherever you can that is that is that will not be fair An institution should take some responsibility of facilitating students to get that kind of an exposure and third uh, responsibility of the institutions is that enter into collaboration all said and done for unitary universities as well as colleges it is not possible to offer courses in all those seven eight categories which I listed uh, some time ago. So uh, the only opportunity, only possibility is to have collaboration and in that context this NEP document has talked about higher education clusters. So the idea of that cluster is which is the most feasible scenario in our country. We see that in our district towns at least we all must have at least one arts college, one science college and one commerce college. So by higher education cluster what is meant by meant is that all these three institutions will be available for all the students in these three institutions which will enable a science college students to pick up courses from arts and commerce and vice versa. So that kind of a cluster idea is there. Please go through the NEP document. There are certain solutions also which has been suggested there how to meet this multidisciplinary higher education possible. Last but not the least, regulators are also expected to have NEP oriented schemes like ABC credit transfer and things like that, they have to come out with a detailed structure 
they also should simultaneously come out with uh, the structure of postgraduate programs because in this document they say that the advanced level courses of level 400 they can be used in the first year PG and similarly they say that first year PG courses can be used for the honors. So unless uh, the regulator uh, in this case UGC comes out that what kind of PG they envisage in view of three and four year undergraduate programs it will be a little difficult for institutions to work out in a holistic manner their undergraduate and postgraduate programs and third but not the least the regulators should facilitate regulatory environment where collaboration among HEIs and more importantly collaboration between HEIs traditional discipline based higher education institution with skill training institutions of government of India and state government vocational institutions by providing incentives to all kind of institutions whether the incentive is financial or in by by way of giving some weightage to such collaborations while accreditation is done. So the two moot points of all this document is that my personal view is that any policy is only as good as it is implemented and implementation of this curriculum framework requires that all major stakeholders, students, teachers, institutions and regulators, they all move beyond their respective comfort zones. So unless we all decide to go beyond our comfort zone and do something new to make it a meaningful exercise, it will, be no, it will not be an easy job to faithfully implement uh, NEP 2020 and this document uh, curriculum and credit framework for four-year undergraduate program.